Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG Build Guide Edition. Today I'm ready to drop on you my new and improved Lazy Necro. Yes, if you just want to hit one button and allow the minions to do all the work, this is going to be the build for you and I am really excited about this new iteration. As always, I will show you every single facet of the build. Everything is timestamped in the description below. Let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Starting off with some gameplay. Now the skills I'm using for this build are Summon Skeletal Mage, Summon Skeleton, Summon Wraith, Summon Bone Golem, and Summon Volatile Zombie. And this build has only gotten lazier because with Summon Skeletal Mage now, we can teleport. So all you're gonna be doing is teleporting and making zombies. This build could not be easier. Now, this is focused around physical and necrotic damage. You are using all melee hitters. Uh, right now, this is empowered content. I've only been working on this build for literally a day. I guess I should say a day and a half because we streamed it for about six hours yesterday. And that's all it took to get our lazy necro in really, really good shape. And remember, this is the CT realm. So this will be available to everybody come March 9th. Now we're going to sit back and we are just going to let the minions take over. Probably just hang out for a second. All you do, make zombies and teleport. That was quick. Let's do another one. And we're off. We don't need to run up those stairs anymore. This build is stronger and quicker than ever. And the necrotic death animation with the new combat looks really, really good. Kind of looks like everything's kind of melting in acid a little bit. feeling lazy this is the build for you now i will say that if you want to take this build really really serious you can easily switch out skeletons for dread shade okay so if you're really trying to turn this into an end game monster it can do that all you do is switch out you put in dread shade for skeletons and it's no longer lazy but it is strong this build together in a day pretty easy stuff let's go fight a shade of orvis all right get the army ready let's do it Come on, pop out. Empowered Shade of Orbis. An eternity of pain. Changing. Just melting. Half life. By the way, as my life just went down too, I'll explain how there's a lot more survivability in this new lazy necro as well. Let me show you how to recreate this build. So now let's check out the skills for this new and improved lazy necro, starting with summon bone golem. And we have definitely changed up this skill a lot. You want five into AOR, one into twin golems. This is the first time I'm taking twin golems and I will explain. Four into unnatural speed, three into AOS, Four into Tower of Bones. And then the new node, the newcomer to this skill is right here with Hunger. Your golem hits restore health to you and itself. This effect restores additional health per vitality. And this is why we are taking two golems. Now, which means you could double everything on here, which means since you have two golems running around, that means every single time they hit, and let's just say, for instance, they hit simultaneously, you're going to get 130 health returned to you. 
And obviously on here, we are taking increased melee attack speed as well. So they are hitting really quick. Every once in a while, you'll see your life about half or even a quarter, and then it just jumps all the way up. Well, that is because your golem is attacking. On top of that, as always, we are trying to stack as much vitality as possible. And whenever your vitality is divided by two, you can add that much more health that they are going to restore to you. It is a great survivability node. Take hunger. Moving over to summon skeletal mage. And for this note, for this skill, we are taking death knights. You want two into leech life, one into death knights, five into cellar mortis, one into order of death, three into gray merchant, one into splinter dominion, two into speed, two into frenzy, one into arcania, one into grave passage, and three into death's cavalry. Again, these two nodes right here are the newcomers for the build that make it even lazier. It means you get a free basically kind of transplant from your skeleton mage and you could take nine minions with you. This build is not focused around dot. It is focused around crit. Moving over to summon volatile zombie. This is the one skill that you will have to actually click over and over again, which is huge for DPS. You want two into forceful commander. One into Daunting Blast, two into Ravenous, two into Pull of the Grave, one into Horrific Vessels. This is what turns it into a necrotic skill. This entire build is based upon melee, necrotic, physical. You then want four into Fervor, one into Army of Rot, one into Repulsive Vomit, four into Corrosive Guts, and four into Wretched Inners. With Corrosive Guts mixed with, or I guess matched with something on the passive tree, which I will show you, it is very easy to get over two to three hundred stacks of armor shred through this build. Moving over to summon Wraith. You want one into Locus of the Resurrection, two into Haunting, one into Twin Spirits, three into SOA. And this is because <clears throat> we are taking permanent Wraiths and this node works really good with melee. Because not only are you getting a larger area, you're also getting more damage and they are big Wraiths. Again, we are taking Necrotic, so we're going to get added Necrotic through Reapers, one into Wraithbringer, one into Spirit Link, three into Dawn of the Fall, and three into Dusk of the Living, because again, this is a crit build. And again, we want it to be lazy, that is why we take permanent minions. Last but not least, good old Summon Skeletons. Yes, yes, yes. You want five in Unholy Rage, one into Morrow Walkers, four into Unbound Necro Necromancy, because you want that crit. One into Grave Walkers, five into Necrotic Conviction, one into Hollow Walkers, one into Dread, and one into Shambling Steel. I'm not sure if I said it. And two into Sweeping Strike. Oh, and one into Bone Armor. I'm sorry. Bone Armor does help keep your skeletons alive. Man, I was all over the place on this one. You want as many plus one to skeletons as you can get. On the tree alone, you are going to get three. And the reason why I cut the number in half is because you need that added damage. And there's already so many minions on the screen. You don't want to add to that because it's hard for them to get to the hitbox. Better to take the damage, increase their size and split them in half. Those are the skills. Moving over to the passives for our lazy Necro. And currently we are level 90. You want eight into Forbidden Knowledge, five into Dark Ritual, eight into Stolen Vitality. Always trying to get as much life as possible. And one into Soul Aegis. Nothing into Lich right now. And right now we have 80 points over into Necromancer. You want eight in Arisen Army, one into Blood Armor, five into Mortal Tether, one into Unbound Necromancy, 10 into Cursed Blood, and eight right here into Aegis Fall. Because this is going to give you a 200% minion shred armor chance, which means every single time a minion hits, it is going to add two stacks. And those stacks stay on for four seconds. So when you combine this node with your zombies, 300 stacks of armor shred easy. You want eight into unearthed arms, two into dark retribution. These nodes are really interesting. So this is something I've added to the build. And basically what this does is every single time a zombie dies or really any single minion dies, you have almost a one in 10. You got an 8% chance to make a skeleton vanguard. And most of the time it's going to be a three free minions. And believe it or not, these minions do do damage. They are melee physical, which perfectly with this build and just like anything else that's just more minions adding shred you can put one point in and then you get a four percent chance if you want to save it but eight percent feels like the right spot 
Then five into fan Frantic Summons, eight into River of Bones, three into Tyrant, six into Cling to Life, three into Empty the Grave, one into this one of the Necromancy, ten into Rite of the Undeath, and three into Moonlight Pyre. Now, I am level 90, okay? And what I am doing right now is I am leveling Tyrant and Cling to Life. I'm actually leveling Cling to Life, then Tyrant, and then I will probably maybe come down here to Mortal Tether to give minions more life. I can't tell. If you want to go DPS, if you feel like your DPS is lacking, your final 10 points, you can go up here and put it into Heresy, which is going to give you intelligence and more critical strike chance. So your last 10 points, you want damage, take heresy. If you want survivability, take the lower bar or mortal tether. The choice is yours. Moving over to everyone's favorite gear, starting with idols. Now, if you want to see true end game loot, of course, check the advanced build planner in the description. That is what you really want to hunt for. But I always like showing off what I am currently wearing because that'll give you some idea about the gameplay I showed earlier. The gear I am wearing and the idols I am using, I found over a day and a half of playing. It is really bad, really, really bad, but I want to showcase it anyways. When it comes to idols, for your top and bottom, you can get crit chance for your skeleton mages, and you can get minion damage, or you can get resistances. So top and bottom, this is a perfect example, you can get crit chance as high as two, and you can get a resistance if you need it, or you can get damage, okay? The four idols going across, you want to be large, okay? And basically what you can get is a lot of life from this. So for example, this one has 30 health on it. You can actually, I wish these two were combined, this has health percent. So you want health percent with base health on three of them. And then on the fourth one, you want health percent plus minion chance to apply mark of death on hit. That would be perfect idols. Again, check the advanced build planner. And then for your little singles, I always take uh, mana and health. Mana and health. Okay. Now, looking over at the gear, there's no gear that is absolutely required for this build. Raven's Rise is a pretty good in slot for gloves. Not required. A really good roll death rattle will give you a lot of crit multiplier. So that would be good as well. Again, check the build planner. Helmet. Amulet. Offhand. Catalyst. Armor. Weapon. Ring. Belt. Ring. Relic. I don't even have four FXs on this relic. Boots and gloves. That is the gear. Now let's check out the character sheet for this lazy necro. Right now we have 23 points into intelligence, 34 into vitality, 34 into movement speed. And again, your movement is going to be from your skeleton mage. Fire's almost max, lightning's double max, cold's max, physical max, necrotic is maxed. And then void and poison needs a little bit of work. But as you can see, we just need to spread the love a little bit, and those should be easy to get and you can get resistances from your idols. When you look at defense, we are over 50% on endurance and almost at 500 on endurance threshold, and critical strike avoidance is at 75. You can really boost these numbers for survivability from blessings. One of my blessings right now is endurance threshold, one is endurance percent, and one of them is crit avoidance. And if you get a good roll, you can almost max out a couple of them. Moving over to minion, which is everybody's favorite. Our overall minion damage is 691. Our melee minion damage is 881. Our minion necrotic damage is 901. And then on here, minion health is 600. And then minion critical strike chance is 11. Minion critical strike multiplier is 200. Now, these numbers do not take into account individual skill trees. So if you look at like Skeletal Mage or Skeleton, they have crit and crit multiplier in the trees. That is not going to show here. So these numbers are really a lot, lot higher. That is the character sheet. Last but not least, let's talk about leveling. Something that I've added into all my build guides are tips and tricks to get it from level one all the way to level 90. Now, 
you have any basic knowledge of LE, you know that you can get to endgame in a day very, very easily. But if you are brand new, this is what you want to follow. First off, if you're new, you probably won't have it. But just in case you have access, use Reach of the Grave. This is a wand that you can put on at level five, and it is one of the best leveling uniques when it comes to minions. It's going to give you lots of cast speed, lots of damage. This can take you. You could use this in endgame down with a little bit of legendary potential. It is honestly a great item. Now, if you don't have this, you can take an axe, you could take a scepter, you can take a wand and you could craft on it minion melee or minion spell. And you can use that in place of reach of the grave. Both work fine. This is just obviously easier. Now, when you're looking at your skills, the first skill you want to take is summon skeleton. Second skill you want to take is summon volatile zombie. Now, this is important. You don't want to actually take transplant, but you want transplant on your bar. OK, so that you can move quickly and freely through the campaign. So you take summon skeleton, you take summon volatile zombie, you put transplant on your bar so you could freely move. Then you take summon bone golem. Then when you unlock your mastery, you switch out summon skeleton or summon skeletal mage, and then you take summon wraith. That is the order. Watch this back so you get it. But don't forget to put transplant on your bar because it's basically going to act as your movement until you get leveled up inside of skeleton mage. All right, everyone, that's the build guide. What do you think of my new and improved lazy necromancers or something I missed? Is there something I could do to take this to the next level? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Two asks at the end of this video. Ask number one. I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today is the day. Yeah, make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. it really does help the channels. We move towards 2023. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 60 people that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. Weekly blog post, weekly podcast, access to the VIP lounge so you can chit chat with me every day. Chance to win custom merch. It really is a good time. And if this build doesn't tickle your fancy, there's over 18 builds linked in the description. That's all I've got. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. It Rin, out. Mm -hmm.